Namaste. Welcome everyone for today's webinar on the upcoming Sanskrit residential camp. This is going to be an exciting first of its kind uh, retreat. And so we're in this webinar, we're going to learn about Sanskrit Samavasana, Samavasa, right? That means camp or that means retreat. And um, Hindu universities, uh, we haven't done a Sanskrit retreat yet. It's going to be December 26th to 29th. We're going to get an overview of this uh, enriching experience. Uh, it's designed to deepen your connection with the Sanskrit language through engaging activities such as storytelling, songs, games, and interactive learning sessions, right? Learning language online has been difficult. We've been doing great, but adding a in-person component is going to be amazing. So we're going to highlight the interesting features of the retreat, answer questions, give some useful insights. And uh, whether you're a beginner or an advanced student of Sanskrit, this is going to give you a glimpse into the transformative experience of the Sanskrit residential camp and how it can help you strengthen your language skills in our Pine Lake Retreat. It's a serene, community-focused environment. If you haven't had any prior exposure to Sanskrit and would like to experience it firsthand, this might be your uh, a good opportunity to get a glance. So thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. Who do we have joining us from Bridgewater? We got Divya, Divya G from Bridgewater. We've got Candice from Northern California. Willits, welcome. We got Balabachi from Arroyo Grande. We've got uh, Ananji from Cincinnati, Loveland. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Let me give a brief introduction of the two faculty who are with us today and maybe uh, Shri Sriyasoji or uh, Dr. Kanada may join us, but maybe not. So the two faculty who are leading the Sanskritam uh, retreat and, and teaching many courses and programs and making the whole Sanskrit foundations that we're uh, working on here at Hindu University work, two of the key figures are Srimati Parvati Sriramji. So Parvati ji is a physical therapist by profession. Uh, she practiced in India before moving to Houston, but it is her areas of interest in Sanskrit and Vedanta. And she's uh, been teaching at uh, uh, teaching Sanskrit for Arsha Vidya Bharati. She's been teaching at Balvihar Chinmay Mission Houston since 2015. Um, but it's her work with Hindu University of America really getting our Sanskrit program, our master's, our certificate program, and now these retreats going uh, where she has been amazing to have and work with at Hindu University of America. And uh, our second faculty and guest is Dr. Surya Narayanan Nanda. And uh, he's devoted his life to studying Vedic texts and classical Sanskrit literature. He holds a PhD in Sanskrit from Utko University in uh, Bhubaneswar. And he's also got a MA and a master's in philosophy from Delhi University. Um, and he's very accomplished. He served as an assistant professor of Sanskrit at St. Stephen's College at Delhi University. He's worked for over a decade as an acharya uh, of, of Vedic texts at a Gurukul in New Delhi. And uh, he spent over a decade as a TV and radio broadcaster delivering news in Sanskrit, both for All India Radio and Dur, uh, Durdarshan in Delhi. He's worked as a full-time uh, Pracharak volunteer for more than 13 years, promoting Sanskrit as a spoken language. Uh, he's authored numerous publications, more than 30 articles in Sanskrit, Hindi, and English. Uh, he was also the editor of Arsha Jyoti uh, Monthly Sanskrit Magazine. It is our pleasure to have him working with us at HUA and uh, really get us going. Oh, Sriyaswaji is joined as a guest. Let me get him into panelist mode. Please accept that, Sriyaswaji. And let me introduce our third wonderful faculty, Sri Sriyaswaji. Namaste, uh, namaste. Thank you for joining. Um, he's actually a retired analyst from the Franklin County Board of Development Disabilities in Columbus, Ohio. And his academic background is in physics, mathematics, law, and computer science. He's really uh, this interdisciplinary scholar, but it's his work as a Vedic scholar and his training in Sanskrit uh, that has really uh, been amazing to work with. And again, at Hindu University of America, he's uh, uh, 
great addition and participant. He teaches many courses in addition to Sanskrit courses. Uh, he's been teaching Veda and Vedanta um, to many students since 1995. He speaks at mandirs, he gives lectures, he teaches in Sanskrit. Uh, uh, Sri Asoji is one of these uh, amazing people who can uh, give the mantra, give the shloka, do the ritual or the puja, and then line by line explain why we do it, what the significance is tied into the context and just a, a wonderful teacher guru that we have at Hindu University of America. And so with these three wonderful faculty, you really should take this uh, retreat, join us in person to learn. But we're going to get into the details of what this retreat is going to look like. We'll take your questions. Um, and with that, and uh, Rushdi from Arizona, thank you for joining. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today for this uh, webinar. With that, let me hand it over to our faculty to get us started. Namaste, Vibhya. Let us start with the Shanti Pathar. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahano Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvinavadhitamas Tumavid Vishavahai Om Shanti 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 Thank you for the wonderful introduction, Ankurji. And thanks to everyone for making time on a Saturday morning to oh, noon, it's all noon in many places, to attend our webinar and uh, showing interest in the retreat. Um, we want to plan a wonderful retreat for all of you. So this um, webinar gives you the preliminary information that you might need. Uh, for those who uh, register um, for the webinar, for the uh, retreat itself, we will have a different uh, webinar to give you more details. This will give you an overview of what the retreat is going to be. Once we know how uh, many have registered at what levels, then we can give you a far more detailed uh, uh, explanation as to what you can expect. For today, let me first start with sharing a PowerPoint and giving you an overview. Uh, Ankurshi, can you confirm that you can see my screen? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So this residential camp is going to begin on the 26th. Uh, it's going to be the day after Christmas, and everyone starts arriving at around 7 p.m. That's uh, how we have planned it. The when and where is what we are going to first talk about. And then it goes on till uh, a little past noon of the 29th. Uh, so people, if they want to fly back home and then start work on Monday, you're still going to get back home in time. Um, the activities itself, the breakdown, I am going to talk about in a little bit. And where is this going to happen? This is going to happen at the HUA campus on the Pine Lake, uh, Pine Lake Retreat. Now, for those of you who haven't visited the Pine Lake Retreat, uh, there's supposed to be a picture here. <laughs> right now, I don't see it. Let me see what's up with the picture. Okay, I see the picture. I think this is a transition. So just share screen and okay. then hit next, 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 and the photos will pop up. Okay, let me do that. Let me go back. Let me do this. Okay, okay I still don't see. So, uh, Uncle G, you are oh, okay here. Here it is. Okay. So, just a few pictures to show you where this camp is going to be conducted, where you're going to be staying what you can expect. And this is in Florida, so it's going to be a lovely time in December. You don't have to worry about how the cold is going to affect you. Okay. I don't know, I'm doing something wrong with the <laughs> showing of the pictures, I can say. Um, Ankur Ji, I think you have the uh, PowerPoint. Could you maybe share from your end? Those pictures aren't coming out the way uh, I wanted to show them at least. Indeed, actually. So we can get back to those pictures later, maybe. So I'll I can do that. Yeah, yeah. I can just go ahead with the rest of the slides, and then I'll we'll come back to look at this one in a little bit.
Mm, second, I'm still trying to work with paranoid is stuck there for me. Yeah, okay, there, I'm out of that. Oh, this is better. So the activities are planned and this is not set in stone. This is kind of giving you an idea of what we might have. So based on uh, the registration, based on the level of the participant, we are going to make changes in this one. And uh, as I said, there'll be another webinar where you'll have a lot more, you'll be given a lot more details. So we are planning to start the day at 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. Go on with some yoga meditation. When we say yoga, you need not do all complicated asanas. That's not what we are uh, planning here. The idea is to immerse your everyone have an immersive experience in Sanskritan. So whether you're doing yoga or dhyanam or, you know, whether we are having a breakfast, we are going to just hear Sanskritam everywhere. We are going to be speaking Sanskritam and the other students are going to be speaking Sanskritam. You yourself will find yourself speaking Sanskritam even if you have never spoken it before. So this is giving you an idea of what we might have. So we will have, when we say breakfast, one hour, we might change that here and there, but there's going to be, uh, this is kind of the structure that we have uh, put in place for now. And we'll have some Sarala Vyakaranam, when we say Sarala Vyakaranam, depending on the group. So if you've never been exposed to Sanskritam, then yes, Sarala Vyakaranam, that is the basic grammar. If you've already been exposed to Sanskritam, so we put you in a different group where you are learning a slightly advanced grammar. If you're already in a master's program in Sanskritam, then the level of engagement would be totally different. So it depends on which group you belong to. So you're probably going to be, uh, you know, in different uh, areas. And then the post lunch, we uh, don't want to bore you with a lot of heavy stuff. So there's going to be interactive um, activities where you have your hands on doing things. You're applying the things that you have uh, learned during the uh, camp itself. So when we say Gita Nataka Abhyasaha, it's not us leading it. It's you taking charge of that situation and putting together something. So we'll talk about more of what you will do with that uh, on the last day as well. And then here it says introduction to literature. Now, uh, Ashwajji and Surinaranji, which parts they will do, they will talk about it themselves. So I'm not going to go into the details of what uh, is you can expect from them. I'm just leaving the, I'm just giving you the basic idea of what's coming. And when we say shloka recitation and meters, they talk about Chanda Shastra. And again, that you don't need to know Sanskritam to learn Chanda Shastra this, or and understand what a meter is or how to how recitation happens. Everyone can participate in those kind of activities. And even in the late later in the evening, we are going to have activities planned right up to maybe 10 p.m. And that's the plan for now. Um, but later in the evening, it's not going to be anything heavy. And uh, we don't have Kanadaji today uh, with us yet. If Kanadaji joins, we will uh, I'll let you know. He, he might uh, share about what kind of, uh, when we say Manoranjanam, what are we going to do in Manoranjanam? So it's not going to be, uh, you know, a passive listening to something, a passive watching something. You'll all be part of that as well. So with every activity, it is designed in a way where you participate you learn, you grow along with it. Uh, okay, now Ashwajji. So Ankurji already gave a wonderful uh, introduction to Ashwajji. I can't do any better. So Ashwajji, welcome. Uh, if you could uh, shed light on the areas that you are going to uh, present uh, during the uh, retreat. Uh, from his, in his own words, let's uh, listen, uh, hear that. Shri Ashwajji. Ashwajji, you are muted. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now, Ashwajji. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we, as, uh, uh, as part of the Samskrita learning, uh, it, we have to start, of course, from the very beginning where our Vedic Rishis were the ones who first created this uh, Samskrita walk. Uh, they were the ones who started. And so we will start with, uh, uh, we'll train some of our youngsters. In fact, uh, we will open it to all the ages. 
uh, about 15 minutes of uh, uh, Veda mantras we will train and then uh, uh, we are just I have just formed the syllabus for that and I will share that with everybody who has registered and also I will share it with uh, on our on the website of HUA. And uh, I want to go back a little bit and then answer one question that might be on the minds of people. What is the use of learning, speaking, uh, and studying a language which is considered as a dead language, a mruta bhasha? But I would like to assert that the Sanskrit is definitely not a uh, a language which is dead, but which is alive. In fact, if there is any language which is alive, it is Sanskritam. In every one of the other languages from India, a uh, lot of uh, Sanskrit is there. So first and foremost, because Sanskrit is the basis of all our languages, uh, therefore, it is essential that we actually study Sanskrit, know Sanskrit uh, in its original form. Therefore, this retreat it will be an excellent introduction to the Bharatiya Samskriti because Samskriti is culture. So, and culture, Samskriti, is based on Samskrita, Vak, that is a speech which is perfected and which is Samskritam. Then another question is... Uh, about what is the use of learning, I am reminded of a very beautiful verse uh, from a poet in Sanskrit called Magha. And he says, Bubukshitaihi vyakaranam nabujyate. For a person who is hungry and asking for edible food, vyakarana, grammar, is not going to feed him. Pipasitaihi kavyaraso na piyate. For a person who is thirsty, the beauty of poetry is not going to quench his thirst. Na chandasa kenachit udhritam kulam. Just because you learn meter and chandas, nobody's family has been ennobled. Therefore, hiranyameva arjaya nishphalaha kalaha. Just go earn money. Uh, all these things are useless. So this is one of the objections not asked by a modern man, but by a Magakavi of ancient times. So therefore, this question has been answered. So we have got to respond to this. Why Samskritam is, re is required? There may not be any tangible financial, economic, social, uh, immediately perceptible use, but there is some extraordinary benefit. And they are, you get nishkrishta jnana, a well-processed and determined knowledge about everything in the creation. It gives mana paripaka, it gives a maturity of mind, a calmness and peace of the mind, and it also increases the, the awareness of the self. And it is Atmodhara. So please join us in this seminar for this intangible but critical benefits. Nishkrishta Jnana, Manaparipaka and Atmodhara. And in addition to that, Sanskrit is going to give us the ability to speak in the most precise manner, with the brevity. With Sanskrit, language can also be articulated where there is no ambiguity, where there is a full of substance, and which is universal in its application. And then it is irrefutable. Such a kind of speech is possible in Sanskrita, and therefore, um, I personally welcome everybody to join this uh, seminar. Parvati ji, little introduction there. Thank you so much, Ashwaji. So Ashwaji is also going to, uh, the part of the camp is going to be um, learning how to recite some Vedic mantras. So Ashwaji is going to be leading that as well. So even if you have never learned any mantras, you're not required to know mantras to come to the camp. So you will learn. And when you leave the camp, you can confidently say, 
I am able to recite a few mantras. And not only will you be reciting, as you see, Ashwajji is also going to keep providing the meaning, you know, the relevance for every single thing that you learn at the camp. He gives a, a complete picture. He does not just do a, an aspect of it. Ashwajji has always uh, been able to uh, give a wholesome experience, whatever it is we are doing, whether he is performing a ritual or whether he is uh, teaching a mantra. So that is what you can expect from Ashwajji's uh, uh, you know, sessions. Thank you, Ashwaji. And uh, incidentally, Parvati ji, um, we have created a small syllabus of chanting of the mantras for 15 minutes. And then uh, we are inviting anyone who would like to le learn these mantras. And then we are uh, probably, we are going to schedule a one hour mantra chanting training session on Thursdays, in the evening from 6.30 to 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. And then anyone who would like to join, uh, you please uh, um, join so that uh, by the time you come to the uh, seminar, you would have already uh, been able to chant these mantras, at least read those mantras accurately. So leading up to the uh, to the. Uh, seminar to the retreat, uh, you will also be able to learn these mantras and present it at the assembly. Yeah. Thank you, Ashwaji. So we will be sharing that information with all those who register for the uh, web, for the retreat. Thank you, Ashwaji. Uh, Dr. Surya Narayan Nandaji. Dr. Surya Narayan Nandaji has been uh, teaching at HUA. He teaches uh, some of the uh, Certificate programs in Sanskrit, prof uh, Sanskrit proficiency, and he leads the uh, spoken Sanskrit uh, classes that happen at uh, HUA as well. Dr. Surya Nandaji. Yeah. Namaste. Uh, Sarvesham Abhinandanam. <clears throat> so, this uh, Sanskrit camp is called in Sanskrit Sama Vasaha, Samskrita. Samavasa. No, so like normally we learn Sanskrit, uh, uh, but here it will be some means together. Avasa means uh, residence, residing. Everyone will be residing together just to feel the Sanskrit. It's not the learning Sanskrit, it's about to eat, dance, speak, walk. Everything we do in our life, we will do it uh, with Sanskrit. So that is the purpose of this uh, Samavasa, uh, residing together and living our life uh, in Sanskrit. And there are, there are lots of other activities will be going on, uh, not to just uh, live in Sanskrit, also to know new things. Uh, also, we will live a life of a little spiritual life. Like in the morning, everyone will be get up with uh, Veda Mantras. Then there will be yoga, asana, pranayama, meditations. Everything will be in Sanskrit. The teachers will teach you in Sanskrit. And don't worry, it is not the, they will not show their scholarship to you. It will be very humble and very simple thing. And uh, <clears throat> like you can understand every word, even you don't know anything, still. Uh, our teachers will try to speak uh, the Sanskrit the way the common person can easily understand. And then uh, there will be, um, yeah, definitely some, uh, remember it will be two full day activities. Uh, Thursday evening, everyone will reach there up to evening and Sunday it will be concluding session and after that everyone will leave. So in two days, we will try our best to give you as much as possible. So there will be uh, <clears throat> some spoken Sanskrit classes. There will be some basic grammar teaching. There will be just you heard uh, Vedo, Veda Mantra Patha. Uh, even you cannot recite, you will hear uh, how the Veda Mantras are recited in different ways, uh, how beautiful they are. Um, and also there will be uh, Chanda, uh, you will learn the meters, the poetic uh, proceeding. Uh, even after the camp, if you want to uh, recite a shloka, what are the rules? Uh, 
uh, in Sanskrit, there is a beautiful literature that is called the science of uh, rhythm. You know, we call it chandam. You will learn to the rhythms. Uh, then also there will be uh, plays. Uh, that play, not someone who is going to show you, all of us, the teacher, student, everyone, will make a skit in Sanskrit, we will practice it and we will perform it. In the same way, there will be <clears throat> Uh, different games and plays, uh, internal and external, in-house and out of the house. Um, there are lots of things will be there, including the evening session of uh, the spiritual session where we will all sing. The way you go to temple and do in your home, the bhajan and kirtan, that also we do in our camp, in samavasa, in Sanskrit. And, uh, you will sing, you will do the kirtans and everything in Sanskrit. So it is a full package from playing, acting to spiritual practice, uh, doing meditation and singing bhajan and kirtan. Everything will be in Sanskrit. In a nutshell, it will be about Sanskrit in a shravanam, bhashanam, Nrityam, uh, Natakam, Khelam, Bhojanam, Shayanam, Sarvam Api Jeevanam, Samskritamayam, uh, Dinatrayartham. Uh, I hope you will enjoy it. Uh, thank you very much. Any question is welcome. Thank you. Namaste. Hare Krishna. Uh, would it be possible for you to uh, send a link to Kanadaji? He's ready to join. Yeah, us. send it to his personal. Okay. And get him on. So, you, have you sent it by email? Yeah, I'll send it again. Okay, let me let him know that uh, you've sent it by email. In the meanwhile, let me try again with that, with those pictures. To see if we can go back. Let me stop sharing, work this out, and then come back again. Any questions? You know, we can start picking over. Has a question, can start asking. The questions are already there. Where oh, do the oh. participants stay? Yes, so that is the one that I'm trying to display. <laughs> let me give me a second. I'll, okay, uh, let me. Uh, in between, Parvati ji is uh, trying to find the slides. Yes, I am it's trying beautiful... to. Yeah. yeah, you got mm -hmm. it? Okay. I think I got it. Yes, here it is. So this is the place that you will be staying at. So if you go to our website and look up the Pine Lake Retreat, uh, you will see it's acres and acres of beautiful scenery and it has separate chalets and beautiful places for you to sit and meditate. Places where we can come together and there are a lot of recreational activities that are available there as well. It's acres and acres of greenery all around, individual chalets for everyone to stay. Um, you can either stay in these or if you want to stay in group, you know, you can stay in a group uh, as well, as a group as well. These are some of the pictures that gives you an idea of what you can expect there. So you see all these, all these are places where we can stay. I'll stop sharing. Are there any other questions? Kanadaji is here. So, uh, Ankurji, can you give a brief introduction of Kanadaji? And Kanadaji can speak as well. Yeah, sure. So, uh, Dr. Kanada Narahari has been uh, with HUA in uh, several different ways. He himself is um, an amazing musician. That's one way that um, we've connected. He's a physician. He's been in the uh, Orlando area and um, just an amazing person to have as so many of our faculty are. 
Um, yeah, he's an Ayurveda doctor. Like I said, he's a he plays a sitar and other musical instruments as well. He's uh, published two short story collections. Um, and uh, he's been part of our whole retreat um, initiative. And he's taught at several retreats now. He's going to add a lot to this one as well. So with that brief introduction, let me hand it to Dr. Narahari. Pranams, everyone. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. I'm so honored to be taking part in this beautiful retreat conducted by Hindu University of America. Um, as a as a child, I Samskritam was something that was always audible to me. Um, at home, my parents were speaking in Sanskrit. Uh, in Sanskrit, uh, Sanskrit Bharati's influence, and we used to have some Bhashana Shibiras at home. That's how I go back early days of my life of, of exposure to the spoken Sanskrit. And um, this is so wonderful. I'm an Ayurveda doctor, and I also, like, as in, 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 when I study Ayurveda, all I, all I see is all these beautiful gems of hidden secrets are written in Sanskrit. So that's how we get, uh, uh, I, I expose myself to go, go to any classics or even speaking Sanskrit, is Samskritam is so sweet as we speak. And, and uh, I'm very, very honored and to be taken part uh, in this beautiful um, retreat. And I would look forward to also learn Samskritam speaking uh, properly again with all these legends here teaching and and going with them, uh, taking their blessings and and contributing side. Uh, I'm a yogi. I'm a kriya yogi. Uh, I'm an initiated kriya yogi. And in yoga, dhyana is something that what we all need in the modern days. I mean, that's what I hon honestly feel about our retreat. Uh, all those asanas and hatha yoga textbooks or hatha yoga principle, the asanas and stuff. Yes, there are thousands, thousands of uh, schools all over the world offering hatha yoga. And there are a lot of other lineages to respect there. So dhyana is something that I am interested in and how we will go as Samskritam itself as a dhyana. So uh, if we if we just understand dhyana is just to focus on any one thing. Uh, Patanjali says that so beautifully, tat pratishedhartam ekatatvabhyasaha, thing, doing one thing. So we will be engulfed and uh, immense beautifully um, the beautiful osmosis between all the Sanskrit scholars and enth enthusiasts to study the Sanskrit uh, uh, in varieties of ways, in spoken ways and in understanding and contemplating ways. There may be varieties of uh, attendees you all having beautiful enthusiasm to study Sanskrit and take the Sanskrit into you. So uh, I will be very happily delivering some of the dhyana uh, techniques and pranayama techniques uh, and music as an entertainment and also as a path to entertainment as the, at the end of the day. Um, uh, so um, uh, we, will, we will discuss further about all these things when we all uh, see and meet. And I'm sincerely looking forward to thank you for the panel and Hindu University of America to have for having me and giving me this beautiful opportunity to work with you all. Namaste, everyone. Thank you, Kanada ji. Surina uh, is was there anything else that you would like to add now that we have? Uh, no, I think out. lots of questions are already there, so we should answer the questions. Uh, there are lots Thank of you. questions. Uh, frequently asked questions. The accommodation is one thing that I saw uh, repeated questions with respect to accommodation. We have many kinds of accommodations, um, private chalets where um, two people can stay, or uh, there are uh, accom residential uh, premises where uh, there are many bedrooms. So if you're coming as a bigger group and you want to stay, you know, few people in each bedroom, uh, that's an option too. It comes with its own kitchen. So, you know, in case you have uh, specific uh, um, needs that you want to cook on your own and you want to eat, even that's an option. Um, all uh, sorts of allergies will be taken into uh, consideration. Uh, we just need that information from you. Uh, the food is going to be vegetarian and in a, prepared in a very satric manner. Um, anything else that you need, you can always uh, let us know. As, as I mentioned already, once you register, we will have a separate webinar where again, we'll address all these specific questions and we will uh, get those information, whatever information we need 
from you with respect to uh, accommodation uh, adjustments and special requests that you might have. And uh, as I said, if you want a, a residence where you want to cook on your own, these are all things that we can talk about once you are uh, registered for the retreat itself. Uh, any other questions? Uh, someone asked about uh, when to reach there. So that's how he, can, he will reserve his so flight. You, um, preferably by around 7 p.m. Eastern time um, on the 26th, is what we are expecting everybody to arrive. A little earlier, later, that is okay. You don't have to arrive at the exact time. So depending on your flight uh, time, you would reach um, you know, the campus around that time. So if you around, uh, arrive around 7 p.m., then it'll be easier for us to address everybody as a group, give you the handouts that you requ require, you know, the resources that you need for the next uh, two, three days. And then give you, you know, kind of help you to find your uh, the, the places that you stay, and give you all the information that you need before you begin the next day. And you'll have enough time to have dinner and settle down. And that's the idea. That's the reason why we are asking for 7 p.m. arrival, at least 7 p.m. A little earlier is okay too. We will uh, be there to receive you. A few more questions. Uh, we will not be recording any of the sessions there at the uh, retreat, uh, especially because we want it to be an in-person experience. So we are not going to record. There are not going to be any online participants in this particular retreat. We want it to be the original Gurukula experience where preferably no devices. We are going to, we are going to put away our devices. They're probably going to ask you to put away your devices. And we are going to, even the handouts and the resources that we are going to give you, we are, it's going to be a paper. You're going to probably hold on to those and not look at it on your iPad. So th that is the experience we want you to have. So we will not be recording those sessions. Um, oh, for the uh, for the Thursday ones, um, uh, Ashwaji, if Thursdays 6.30 to 7.30 doesn't work, then uh, do they have an alternate uh, time or will they have to, uh, are there recordings available for those sessions? Yes, uh, I plan to record all the mantras in my voice and each one of the clip no longer than about a minute. And it will also be uh, associated with the, with the text, both in Devanagari as well as in English. So that uh, those who are not able to join the classes on Zoom on Thursdays, then they can actually listen to these one-minute clips along with the printed text, and they can practice on their own. And then when they come, they will be able to join the chanting groups. Thank you, Ashwaji. Sure. So there are questions about uh, some family members uh, attending and some family members not attending. So we want to have an immersive experience. So we would like those, the participants themselves to be there the whole time. So, and not to go missing. So if you're trying to spend uh, some time with your family, like some time at Disneyland and some time here, that will not work for participants. But that said, if your family wants to be at Disneyland and you want to be here, we don't have an objection to that. So that is perfectly all right. They can be there. Uh, only thing is, you you might not want them to stay with you because this is not close to Disneyland. So that is uh, a disclaimer. You will see if you actually look up how far it is. This is about an hour and a half or so uh, drive from uh, the airport, and Disneyland is the other way. So that's going to it's not going to work out if that is the plan. I'm just mentioning this out there for all of you who are planning. Oh, December break. Okay, the kids take go to the Disneyland and I go to the retreat. So you will have to work that out properly. And that was one of the questions. And then, okay, can we come earlier? Um, we will try to see what we can do to uh, give you, we may not, I don't know when the chalets are going to be ready for you to occupy them, uh, but you're definitely, you can uh, arrive earlier and uh, the premises will be open on that day. So you can hang around there. But your own uh, place where you're going to take residence may uh, be available a little later. Uh, 10 a.m. may be too early for uh, them to keep it ready. I'm not really sure, but we can try to uh, find out. And uh, as I said, once you're, you've registered, we can start uh, 
requesting for those kind of accommodations. A few more questions. Uh, okay, about uh, from the uh, airport, uh, we um, we will try to make a group where all of you can chat with each other. If many of you who are arriving together, probably you can carpool and arrive. Um, as I said, it's a longer distance. Even if you are taking an Uber, you could probably uh, travel as a group. Uh, we do not have a shuttle because people come at different time and the, the distance makes it difficult for us to arrange a shuttle uh, from the airport to the retreat. And you do not need uh, vehicles to move within the, the campus is very big, but it is uh, you can walk around. Uh, unless you have any special needs, you should be able to walk around the place. You don't need any uh, special, uh, you know, you don't need bikes or you don't need cars to uh, be within the premises itself. Other questions? So if you're coming with children, we uh, please uh, and, and you know let us know because we will have activities. When children can learn from Strutham. So we will have activities planned for them. We do not discourage children, uh, though children five and under <laughs> may not learn Sanskritam when we are trying to engage them. That will be difficult. But uh, children who are uh, school going age, we will try to engage them uh, in activities. Um, but please let us know in advance. So we have uh, separate sessions for them. We have uh, activities planned for them. They may not want to do the same activities as an adult. So we will have to plan uh, for that. Yes, so people who have zero knowledge of Sanskritam need not worry. We will start by, with, for those of you who say, I know very little or know Sanskritam, we will start at the basics. We will assume you know nothing and we build from there. So you do, you're you not expected to read Devanagari. So the material we give are like, uh, let's say Ashwajji's uh, Risa, you know, mantras. The mantras are going to be given to you in Devanagari as well as in transliteration font. So you don't have to uh, really even know how to read Devanagari to attend the camp. You don't have to know the script. You don't have to know any Sanskritam at all. So this could be your, okay, I want to try Sanskritam this time. And if I listen to it, if I hear it, if I participate, if I like it, I'm going to start learning Sanskritam. Yes, this is the place to be. So you get two whole days of being in Sanskritam and see if it calls out to you. I'm assuring you it will call out to you. There are a few more questions. Okay, I think I already answered the question about uh, the cars and bikes. Am I missing any questions? Does anybody else? Uncle G, do you see any other questions that I have not answered? I think somebody asked about the cost. Oh, the cost is, uh, it should be there uh, once you go to the um, register your interest, you get the details there. The reason I'm not mentioning the cost here is because it depends on the kind of accommodation you choose. So uh, it depends on the number of people attending. It may vary if you're uh, attending alone. It may be if you know, you're coming together as a family, the cost may be different. So we have different costs for those as well as the kind of accommodation you choose. So based on that, the cost differs a little and that's the reason I did not talk about the cost. But you will get that information once you go into the, our website and check it out. If you have further questions, you can always um, uh, write. You can always write to us and uh, we will, um, Uncle Ji, can, if you can let them know where they can uh, send their questions that they, that might uh, occur to them after the webinar too, we will uh, give you a, uh, play, uh, an email address or a place where you can reach out to us with your questions before you sign up. So yeah, Uncle Ji has uh, that in the chat, yes. Yeah, the two emails, mine and the info, will definitely get back to you. Jayanti Ji, yes. This webinar is basically public. We ask people to register and you know join our database to get access. But yeah, please share with your family, especially if you're considering bringing them. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. And as I mentioned, this age is no bar. You can, you know, all participants five and above can easily participate in this uh, retreat. And uh, if you have any special medical conditions or anything, let us know. We will see how, what kind of accommodations we can make for you, especially, as I said, with respect to food. If you have, if you're on a special diet, we can arrange that, you know, you can have a kitchenette, you know, a place that has a kitchenette where you can prepare your own food or you bring your own food and you can eat and eat. 
we can we'll see what other accommodations we can make for you so all those uh, individual uh, information that uh, we will get from you uh, at the time of registration or right after that and we will have someone call you if you need to talk to someone so just write to the um, vegan is also possible definitely jayanti ji vegan diet is any kind of uh, those kind of restrictions you can always let us know in advance so we can make sure that we will uh, take that into consideration we do not assure that uh, you know um, you know you will get exactly you can't uh, order your menu <laughs> that is not something it's like no i want this for breakfast this for lunch and this for dinner might not happen that's uh, we don't decide the menu but we will try to make accommodations if you as i said vegan if you have any special health conditions we will try to make accommodations for those especially the allergies yes we will uh, be uh, mindful of those great the weather in uh, florida in december in groveland where we're at it's supposed to be about 75 degrees during the day and 53 degrees at night maybe a little cooler but it should be good but uh, you know weather is notoriously okay. unpredictable so hopefully it works out um, we decided the December because at least it's not hurricane season, so we can we don't have to worry about uh, flight delays. We don't have to worry about you know a hurricane hitting Florida. So we thought, okay, December is a safe time. Initially, we had planned September, and then we thought, oh, hurricane season that may not work out in Florida. So we moved it to December. That's one of the reasons why we moved it to December. Many of you were wondering. We did a um, survey, uh, and many preferred uh, September. So why didn't we go with September? This is our answer to why we didn't go with September. September, October, we can't really say uh, how it uh, goes in Florida. Um, any, there was another question that yeah. I want to answer. Ganesh yeah. is asking the about the retreat. parallel astronomy retreat. Yes. So at the same time, yes. on the 26th right. to the 29th, we're going to be having this uh, Sanskrit camp, this residential camp. And we're also doing nakshatras and galaxies, exploring Hindu astronomy. That's what Dr. Rajvedam. And they're going to be at the same time. And we're going to make sure that there is some uh, connectivity. And if you want to talk about how we're planning that and what's going to go on there. Let me, um, there's one, there's two aspects to it. Uh, so those of you who want to attend both at the same time, uh, remember, you will not sleep if that's going to happen. Because our activity starts at 7 a.m. and probably will go on till 10 p.m. And their activities will start at sundown and will probably go on, you know, well into early hours of the morning. Okay, so if you are someone who doesn't need sleep, then yes, sign up for both. But all others, please do not sign up for both, both of them. Please pick one this time. Both these retreats are going to be offered again. So, you know, pick one this time and pick the other one the next time. Um, that is that is my advice to you with respect to, uh, you know, attending both the retreats. Another um, thing I would like to say is you will not uh, be uh, doing things together. Uh, the reason being, ours is a completely Sanskritam immersive experience. And the astronomy people may not want to speak in Sanskritam. So we do not want that. So we want to try to keep you in a, you know, in, a, in an environment where everybody is speaking Sanskritam. Sanskritam is on the top of your mind. Uh, other things, uh, not so much. So it's not, it's going to, though the camps are happening in the, on the same premises, uh, we are not, as I said, it's not going to be, there's not going to be an overlap of uh, activities and you will not find each other, the two groups together in any of the activities. I think um, there may be some opportunity to sit in and um, take maybe one session or get some overview. We'll work on that. So that there's at least some Connectivity, but I hear you. When you're thinking in Sanskritam, you want to be focused on Sanskritam and the language, and then that immersive uh, aspect is so important. Um, but as Parvati Ji said, uh, the astronomy retreat is in the evening. You know, looking at the sky with the with the. Yes. Go ahead. One more question. This is a good question. If you were attending as a family and your family wants to do the astronomy, you want to do the Sanskritam, you are very welcome. So that we don't have a problem with. You know, you can definitely uh, do that. As I said, it's only the same individual cannot probably do both. But, you know, as a family, you can, some of you can do astronomy, some of you can do Sanskritam, especially if you have little children and you think they would enjoy the astronomy better than the Sanskritam. Yes, definitely, please, please you can plan for that. That is an option. Um, but of course, if it's very young children, there also they need uh, an adult supervision. So plan for that. 
you, you you know there are sing one parent bringing her children and you want to attend sanskritam and they have to be at the astronomy that might not work out so so think about those things and as i said if any other this is questions, exciting <laughs> if any other questions occur to you even after the webinar we are available to answer those questions uh, you can always write to info and they'll pass it along to the person uh, who would be the best one to attend those, uh, answer those questions. If it's respect, with respect to Veda Mantra, then they will redirect you to Ashwaji. He is probably going to give you uh, information about that. If it's something about Chandra Shastra that you need to talk about, then Turanarayanji will answer that question. So if it's about the cost, somebody from our um, admin team will talk to you about the cost, the kind of accommodations that are available. So you write, there is one email, but it is going to get directed to whoever can answer those questions for you. Well explained, Parvatiji. I'm just so excited what we're doing at Hindu University of America. This Sanskrit retreat, we know Sanskritam is such a core uh, pillar of what we're doing at Hindu University of America. And the couple of batches that have uh, graduated either through the certificate program or the MA program, we had one batch, they're doing interesting and amazing things. They're taking, as, as Sri Asoji and everyone has talked about, they're applying it in interesting, creative ways that is important, that are important for the Hindu community just here and globally. And then what we're doing at HUA, right? The Sanskrit retreat, the astronomy retreat, the different uh, courses, the different programs. I'm just excited and proud to be a part of it. And you should too. You should join Hindu University of America. We're continuing to create new offerings, new programs. We're doing in-person events, all sorts of, um, like, look, we're doing a gala in Atlanta tonight. If you're in Atlanta and you haven't heard about it, join that. We're going to be doing a gala in Los Angeles on October 26th, um, if you can join that. But these retreats is really the where all of this comes together, the in-person energy. The campus is beautiful, and especially for Sanskrit, right? People are wondering, how are you going to learn language online? Well, we've done it. We've done it well. But then adding this in-person component is really going to be amazing. So I, I, I launched the poll. I see there's a couple of interests. Great. If you don't see the poll, minimize, maximize, and, and fill it out. Let us know. And this is just going to be exciting and definitely family friendly. We're going to be accommodating. We'd love to answer your questions and figure out how to address whatever concern it is that you and your family have so that you can join us and be a part of this. Yeah. May, may I add something here? Uh, well, one of the things that uh, all of us coming from the background, Indian background, I would actually extend it to Indian background, is that uh, we are all interested in knowing exactly what is our culture, the Bharatiya Samskriti. So Bharatiya Samskriti is actually any culture for that matter, if we want to study a culture, there are three important aspects of uh, that we have to consider. One is Bhasha, Vesha, and Bhusha. Bhasha means the language. Vesha is some clothing and the dressing up, which are actually very distinct to a culture. And there is also the Bhusha, the various kind of ornamentation that we do, of all of these things, it all starts with the bhasha. And that bhasha, as we said, is starting from actually Samskrita. Samskrita is also called as bhasha su mukhya madhura. Among all the languages, uh, one of the chief languages uh, of humanity has created is this beautiful language of uh, Sanskrit. And this is also very, very uh, sonorous, musical, lovely to hear. And this is something that is also called as girvana. Girvana means that which is the uttered by the gods. And therefore, you will also, you will actually be uh, speaking, thinking, and acting uh, in a way in which the gods actually think. And therefore, uh, this is something more than just learning another language, is, but it is actually being in line with Bharatiya Sanskriti itself. And that's the beauty of uh, Sanskrit. Uh, <clears throat> Many of you have asked about uh, traveling on the 25th rather than the 26th. 
please write to us. If we see that a majority of you who are registering are requesting for that, we will see what accommodations we can make or if we can uh, change um, something about with the dates themselves, uh, dates itself, and we can see what we can do for you. But for that, we would need, if it's just one or two, we might not change anything. If a majority of you who register uh, are going to request for that, we will definitely make accommodations. But please, if you're one of those who want to travel on the 25th rather than the 26th, please write to us and um, you know say you are registering because if it's just a random request and we make the accommodation and those who are attending don't want it on the 25th, that would uh, you know put us in deep trouble. So please, uh, if you're serious about uh, attending the retreat and you want it on the 25th, uh, do not hesitate to write that, you know, in, in format that that is your preference. Eleanor will get the pet policy, but uh, as you uh, know, it's probably unlikely, but uh, there it is outdoors, we'll see. I'll, I'll make a specific ask of the, the retreat management and what their policies on pets. Um, yeah, if you haven't filled out the poll, only half of you have so far, please just hit the minimize. And even if you're hitting no, that's fine. Just let us know. I think we're closing in on the end of questions. Uncle G, uh, for now. this uh, question about the pet, are you going to uh, um, answer the, that directly or will they have to write to, uh, to the email and then we send the response to the email? Yeah, Eleanor Shinivasan. Uh, Shinivasan. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll email her specifically. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to say one thing, if I would see. Go uh, ahead. Okay. If you are uh, planning to come, please also. If you have any talent, suppose you you sing, you dance, you 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 know to to do some uh, skit or something. Uh, please plan for that in Sanskrit in advance. Uh, there will be some scope uh, where you will present your talent in Sanskrit. So that's uh, uh, it's, uh, I'm telling you in advance. You can plan it. Uh, that will be good. So you can show your talent in Sanskrit. <laughs> And if what uh, uh, Mahodia means is if you have a costume, special costume for those things, you definitely want to pack that. So when you're packing for the retreat, you want to say, okay, this is something I want to, you know, uh, uh, use there. So think think that way. Like it, you could be part of the uh, those who are uh, showing that uh, this is a possibility and then you, you know, you need everything, all the material, you, you can't leave it at home. So as I said, once you register, we will have another webinar. We discuss all these things in detail at that time. Yes, parking is available in the retreat. Yeah, the retreat area is, I think it's about 400 acre area. There's lots of space. <laughs> there, there will be a lot of space for parking. Yeah. So uh, if you are a Sanskrit enthusiast and you don't know about your family, bring them, we'll turn them into Sanskrit enthusiasts as well. So you can do this, uh, you know, learn Sanskritam together. Sanskritam family, that's the best way to go about doing it. If you speak Sanskritam at home, there's no way you won't speak it faster. You'd be able to speak uh, fluently much faster if your entire family is trying to speak in Sanskritam. So I think we are at the end of the time, Ankurji, and I don't see any more new questions. Yeah. Well, as always, it's a pleasure. I'm so glad that we were able to put this together and this Sanskrit retreat is uh, coming together, this residential camp. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a wonderful experience. I uh, invite you all to participate. Um, thank you all. That's it for me. I'll give it to our panelists, faculty for closing thoughts, maybe a mantra, however you would like to end today's webinar. Again, thank you everyone <laughs> for uh, joining us and being a part of Hindu University of America. This is our university. Uh, this is a, a initiative that is, I'm, I mean, close to my heart, dear to my heart, but we are continuing to expand and grow and welcome you to join us in whatever capacity is best for you. Ashwajji, would you like to uh, conclude the prayer? Sure. Pure grame gruhe kutyam balo vruddho yuva picha karotu samskrita abhyasam prapnotu Sukha Sampadam Om Purnamada
ಪೂರ್ಣಮಿದಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಾತ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಮುದಚ್ಯತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣಸ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾದಾಯ ಪೂರ್ಣಮೇವಾವಶಿಷ್ಯತೆ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಅಂಕುರ್ಜಿ ಅಶ್ವಥ್ ಜಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಪ್ರಣಾಮ್ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ್ ಟು ಎವ್